Hey everybody, it's Colette Baron reed Welcome to a very special edition of the Universal Energy Forecast. For the first four months of this year, I have a special guest. Uh, my most popular guest ever is Robert Ohado, and he has generously um, uh, agreed to come on and do this very special forecast with me for the next four or five months, actually. We've decided to take the first chunk of the year and really talk it out. I'm going to be doing the first part of this by telling you what all three of my Oracle decks are saying, and then Robert's going to either tell me if I'm right or wrong, <laughs> but really set us straight. Um, Robert is, if you don't know him, I mean, you need to know him. He is the creator of Soul Contract Astrology, and you can check him out at ohado.com. Um, he's got these fantastic downloads, which we're going to tell you about at the end today, um, especially Mercury Retrograde and this latest Jupiter in Retrograde. So I really want to uh, give him the floor in a second. So I'm going to start out by telling you how I decided to do this this year. I really prayed about it, and I knew that this was going to be a very important year for all of us. And I thought I would ask all of my decks to speak a little bit to the next four or five months. And so I started with the Wisdom of Avalon cards and I chose two cards that came jumping out at me. And it was interesting because when I did the overall theme last week for the year, we got the Eagle King from Wisdom of the Hidden Realms. And the very first card this week for the next four months is the Eagle in this deck. And the Eagle, of course, is about spiritual integrity and what that means is, is how we actually uh, practically apply our spiritual values, our ethics, and, and how we perceive the world, but how we act practically um, with our spirituality. So it's something a little bit different than, oh, you know, spirit's looking after us. It's more about, we are, we're, we're, we're about being practical with this. So the next four months reminds us that spirit is a practice. Um, spirit is an action. Spirit is a verb. Um, it is not just an entity that we give our power over to. We work, th we work with spirit and spirit works through us. So this is our key. Um, the cat is the second one, which is about healthy boundaries and independence. But what it, this also indicates is our spiritual, our spiritual force within us is pushing us to change and pushing us to become integrous and to take a look at how we set boundaries with ourselves and others, but also how we set boundaries with ourselves. You know, like how, how much excess are we going to allow ourselves? And I don't think we're gonna really get to in the next four months. I think we're really going to be seeing that anything that really doesn't have practical value is gonna get thrown out the window. And, and what we want to do is to allow for that because the next two cards are going to tell us a little bit more about the concept of allowing. These come from Wisdom of the Hidden Realms. Now, I got the Prison Wife reversed and the Fire Prince upright. So thank goodness for the Fire Prince upright. <laughs> so we that the beginning theme leads us into the consciousness of self-sabotage. So where do we sabotage ourselves? We're going to get a really good glimpse of this, especially when we're setting out the new year with all these plans and these ideas and these desires. And, and, and we can't have the real clear picture if we aren't willing to take a look at the shadow and and so and our actions around that. So if we don't resist this, it will be very easy because the fire princess says, hey, this is a time to be optimistic. This is nothing to be shying away from. This is good information. And whatever is withheld from you is positive. Rejection is God's protection. Right now, you gotta keep this in mind. If it is withheld from you, it's not for you. And what is for you cannot go past you. This is crucial to remember when things are kind of like, you know, um, the pressure building between the desire for movement and the push to stay put and, uh, and address and perceive and look at and then, and then uh, clean up. So it's like a big cleaning a house in the next four months as well as taking a look optimistically at the things that you really do desire. Closing this out, and I'm dying to hear what Robert has to say about this, are two reversed cards from the Enchanted Map. And these are really asking us to readdress and redefine what is authenticity to us. We feel the deep need for freedom from our past, but we have to become aware. We have to allow for self-awareness. We have to allow for the integration. We have to allow also to, for the redefinition. And if we are also at the same time craving certainty, well, there's a little bit of a problem.
problem there when unexpected visitors, which is the reverse card, tells us that, you know, changes, if we aren't willing to allow the change, it'll get thrust upon us. So it's a serious um, readdressing of the deeper layers of the things that we want to hide from ourselves while we merrily try to manifest our reality and la la la, law of attraction, but that's not going to work. This is like, this is serious business these next four months. Um, and the redefinition of home, which is our soul's position inside our life. You know, the ego has a place, but it's got to move over for the soul now. Like both of the, both parties, that's the soul, the ego, and the artist. The artist is the one that manifests from this. How are we co-creative in this period, these next four months? It's nothing to be alarmed about, but it's about awareness, staying still, staying, remaining optimistic, which is, we do have the fire prints in there, which does say that there is some optimism here. It doesn't mean, oh, it's gonna be doom and gloom for the next four months, but it's serious. It's like, how, how, how willing are you to do the do things to make your dreams come true? This is an action, but it's slowing down and it's the appropriate action. What does that mean? What is integration? Anyway, Robert, I'm gonna let you take it away from here. I hope this made sense to what you're about to say. <laughs> and yeah, uh, I, I'm always surprised that, you know, we've done this before. We just tag team on this and your, your card selection is always spot on with the, of course, in synchronicity with the, the, the heavens and the energies and the archetypal cycles that we're in right now. So the thing that I would lead off with just kind of taking off of where, where you were is that we entered into 2015 with Jupiter retrograde in Leo, which is a really, it's turning out to be one of the most major Jupiter retrogrades I've ever seen. So it's bringing up this, um, it activated by the way, December 8th, that's when the retrograde began. And the activation of any cycle in its retrograde phase is about dipping into the shadow of ourselves, dipping into the unconscious aspects of ourselves. And in this case, it deals with dipping into the unconscious Leo part of our psyche, of our lives, of our soul contracts. So what that means is we are on this destiny uh, to be creative, to be creatively engaged with life and to do all these amazing creative things and express what is most fundamentally unique about us. But this cycle is activated in people, this necessity for us to look at how were we conditioned to not be creatively expressed in our lives? So I know for myself, you know, growing up, I was told uh, that certain parts of who I was weren't okay and you couldn't express mm -hmm. yourself this way and don't be, you know, so sensitive and don't be in. I was always into fringe creative stuff, you know, uh, and fringe <laughs> creative sports. And I always are. got shamed <laughs> for that. So I, I think part of the first uh, element of this year is having us re revisit in ourselves where were we shut down creatively because what we wanted to be in our uniqueness wasn't acceptable, okay, or discomforted others in their own sort of prisons of, of where they were with themselves, i.e. our parents and authority figures growing up and our culture overall. So we have this big uh, shadow review of Leo energy going on and it's an essential because it is about how can you feel safe in your creativity? Right. And then you've got this other cycle coming in, which you're really speaking to through these cards. I mean, it's funny that you also drew the cat. I'm like, right. oh, hello. That's, you know, that's <laughs> the symbol for Leo in one way in astrology. Right. But the, the other side of this is Saturn recently on December 23rd went from Scorpio into Sagittarius. It's going to dip into that sign for about four degrees. And then on March 14th, it's going to retrograde and start heading back to Scorpio for a little bit. So it's this transitional phase. And Saturn, Saturn is an energy that's really harsh in a way. It doesn't suffer fools and it doesn't suffer you fooling yourself. Right. So there's this other activation going on. Not only do we have this activation of where are you creatively blocked and where have you been uh, conditioned uh, with, uh, con I call it conditional creativity. You can be creative, but only this way. You know, parents will tell their kids all the time, hey, we want you to be exceptional and unique, but only in certain zones. Right. And if that's not what your soul's essence is about, then you have this journey of destiny of figuring out how can you be authentic within a culture, family, or society that maybe doesn't appreciate what is most essentially awesome and unique about you. And maybe and Saturn's if it's, coming in. And maybe if it feels saying, dangerous. Yeah. Right? So maybe it might feel dangerous too, or might feel like, you know, because... I just want to bring this in just before I forget, because there could be this real sense of it's too dangerous for me to express myself in some other countries. This is globally for everybody right now. And I think there's an obvious we're seeing it everywhere. Anyway, I'm sorry to interrupt. 
Yeah, well, that, and thanks for bringing that up because one of the most poignant things that happened that I witnessed, yeah, I had done this whole series, Jupiter Retrograde and Leo, which has you know, been selling like crazy, people have been loving it, and, and I had already said, this is a global time of us looking at conditional yeah. creativity, and then North Korea comes into the U.S. and says, you can't be creative in any way that threatens our dictator. Right. So they and then they ha get hacked and threatened, and it happened literally at a at a global scale where we all could bear witness to this cycle's activation. And this is the nature of soul contract astrology and looking at the archetypal layers here, that we are all connected to these. We all have Leo in us somewhere, no matter what sign you are or what your birth right. chart says. It exists somewhere in your own self. So we all are some combination of all these energies, which are symbolized by the astrology signs. And there is going to be this ongoing questioning and deep shadow work around the Leo area of our life in terms of growth, expansion, and expressiveness that's necessary now for us all to do what we're born to become and do Ooh. in the world. So Saturn comes in and says, all right, I have to now, in, in Scorpio the last two years, it's been a lot of deep historical, ancestral, family line, cultural work on our shadow and our emotional self and where we are needing emotional, as you just said, safety. Right. And the thing that I really occurred to me as an insight around this, uh, combining these two energies together, and mythologically Saturn, you know, was the father of actually Zeus, Kronos, uh, was the father of Zeus, and that's Jupiter. And uh, Zeus overthrew him, you know, to establish the Olympians, this new paradigm. And we right. all have that archetypal dynamic in ourselves where there's an inner Zeus that's trying to overthrow the old status quo of safety and security. And I would offer everyone this insight that, you know, safety creatively, I, I've come to learn myself, has to come from your willingness to be hated by people for yeah. being who you are. A lot of people walk around and they think, well, I'll be, I'll finally do my creative thing once everyone will applaud me. And you can say that and I'll meet you in heaven and we'll talk about how you never did a thing. <laughs> because, the, you know, the point is, I've taken creative risks as of you all of our whole lives to be who we are authentically as we continue to do. And not everybody's happy about that. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. That doesn't mean you're on the wrong path. That doesn't mean you shouldn't keep going. And, and then Saturn comes in and says exactly that. Buck it up. Get real with yourself. It's time to tell some truths. This is Sagittarius. This is about the bigger picture of truth and the meaning of your life. And what are you going to be in the world and not supersize it out of hypercompensation for your lack of worth. But what are you going to be in the world that's just simply unique to you? Uniqueness yeah. is your nature. And then we come up with this idea of being special. And Saturn's saying, you know, special is hierarchical. I'm not down with that. Special means that there's someone less special than you and that there's hierarchies of specialness and therefore hierarchies of worthiness. And Saturn's coming in and saying, good, you're going to confront that in yourself. You're going to confront that in yourself when we're going deep. I'm going to make you get real because it's time to realize the dreams that are realizable, that are in your lane, that are part of your soul contract and not part of chasing someone else's dream or chasing their creativity because the culture applauds them. So there's this real, man, it's on. I mean, this year is hitting it, you know? And there's a heaviness in it, I'm feeling, because the retrograde of Jupiter, anyway, is a bit kind of like turning in with your sense of hope and confidence and esteem and kind of going, oof, I'm a little depleted here. Yeah. And then Saturn coming in and saying, yeah, we got to get to work. You know, there's some serious truths and, and things you must look at from a very mundane, practical, practical level. Practical, right. right. Yeah. And then this sets up, in all of this, right, um, for this upcoming Mercury retrograde, which is going to begin January 21st and um, go through February 11th. And this retrograde is in Aquarius, which actually archetypally is in opposition to Leo. So you've got this polarity going on of opposites, both active through retrograde. And Mercury, as I've said on this on your show before, <laughs> is the messenger of the gods. It's going to be the messenger on the behalf of Jupiter, on the behalf of Saturn, on behalf of all the other planetary energies as well that are active in their own way. And it's going to come with an Aquarian message, which um, everyone can, you know, I'm sure you'll mention this in your next video next week on how people can get that audio series. Yeah. Um, but everybody can, I'm just now beginning to constellate my ideas around that. Um, but it is the complement, I think, to the Jupiter retrograde right. and Leo for sure, because they're in polarity archetypally in, in the zodiac. So Aquarius is this, you know, where do you fit in the bigger world? What's your role to humanity? And also, how bright are you willing to shine? And, and there's a difference between a luminosity that gives off glare. 
you know, right. and that's where someone's hypercompensating to try to be shiny and being luminous by just being who you are. And I think that in ourselves is being summoned, like what, what, where are you trying to glare to be important or special instead of being unique? And unique, you, you can't help but be unique. Every single human being, every soul on the planet is unique. And it's a matter of how are you going to now, and this is Saturn, incarnate that in a way that helps us all understand why we're here. Can I ask you though, uh, what is what do you think then we would say to people? I mean, everybody starts the year, you know, having all these big plans, right? And and I do feel that everybody is also a little bit nervous. You know, there's a nervousness going on, and and like you said, this heaviness and. And uh, what is the what is the service of fear right now? You know, so it's like feel the fear and do it anyway, right? It's it's, it's the, because I think the resistance piece, and I'm not sure if that's because we're all experiencing it um, because of the 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 polarity or the the tension between Saturn and and Jupiter, which one is that bringing a heavy, the other one is expansion. So those two things are at opposites, right? So, you know, is this, is this something that people can use in a way? I know you talk about that a lot, about how you can use it in a practical way. Yeah, you know, there's healthy, there's healthy fear. Right. You know, and I think that it's important to understand where it's healthy and it's guiding you in terms of, you know, turn right, not left, because you, you get this pit in your stomach. And then there's the fear of entering the unknown. Which is and so I think yeah. it's, it's about dialing into oneself and going, which fear am I experiencing right now? And, and it takes a little bit of practice to kind of, and sometimes it's both, you know, it's like, a, but it, if you grew up as we all did in this culture, which is shame based, this culture, feeling like if I, if I'm not going to get applause and, and be big and the, the paradox is the people that get the applause and are big tend to be the ones that break the rules. Right. You know, they're the ones that go out and do stuff that no one else will. They take the risks. They go out and then everybody eventually, oh, they're so amazing. But you don't realize that they were scared, you know, yeah. S-less during that whole process. So everybody is afraid. Every time I've met a threshold of change in my life or gone into the unknown, there is fear there. And it's a healthy, I think, way to stay alert and awake. And it can be connecting and actually nourishing. So the I'm reason- not a fan of this whole like you know, be fearless. No one's fearless. See, Everybody the reason I has some measure of fear. It's a matter of confidence is about, I have fear. I'm dialed into where it's intuitive guidance is directing me. And now I'm going to either stop because my system's not ready or I'm being redirected or I'm going to move forward and know that this is about moving into the unknown and, and, uh, you know, exploring an unknown part of my creative life and my creative self, the unlived parts of my grace, my nature, and here we go. And not make it about applause, but make it because it's just what your destiny asks of you. You know, you just do it because it's what you are. I think that's really the key point there. And I wanted you to say that about the unknown, because I think that um, we don't want to walk in as Pollyannas. You know, we, oh, I want to go create this thing that I think they're going to want because that doesn't work. And that's the, that's what the cards were saying too. Like, you know, getting really authentic is it's, it's being practical, taking a look at where you are inauthentic and, and allowing for the fear. That's the other thing. People say, oh, I better not have, be afraid. And it's okay. I think it's giving yourself permission to have all the feelings that are going to come up in the next few months. And not all of them are going to be optimistic. Yay. Everything is going to be great. Sometimes it's going to be scary to look into this and what will happen to me if I am allowing myself just to be myself and even, and then feeling that extraordinary freedom that comes with that. But there's always that sense of like, it's the unknown. I don't know what it is. I don't know what my uniqueness really is because I may have been so indoctrinated by all these other things. I think that's true for everybody. I don't know anyone who hasn't had some measure of shame around being themselves. I don't know of anybody at all. I mean, it doesn't matter where you come from, what your sexual orientation may be, what yeah. your ethnicity may be, your gender, um, your religious beliefs, your political beliefs. We've all had some measure of, hey, we're not cool with who you are. And so there's an element in this transition of the next four months of having to confront, I call them shadow loyalties. They're tribal, they're loyal, you're loyal to the um, shadow safety of the group and the tribe and the family legacy and lineages you come from. And they're normal. They're part of what kept us alive as kids. You know, if, you, if your parents said, hey, don't tell people you're gay, well, then you don't because, right. you know, 20 years ago, that wouldn't have been such a good idea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, now it's more and more important for us to say, wait a minute, this is just who I am, you know, and, yep. and rest into the safety of that. 
because now it's the authenticity. Once you become spiritually awakened, it's the authenticity that saves your ass. Right. It's not the it's not the shape shifting. It's not the people pleasing and the codependent tracking of everything, and then morphing creatively into what everyone you think everyone's going to want from you. We're at a point now where we're fairly awake, where we can smell phoniness. Yeah, you, know, you can kind of feel it out in people, and you go, "Wait a minute, this, something's off there. Something doesn't feel right." And that's true. You do smell it. Yeah. So there's going to be a task to smell that in yourself. When am I not being really myself? And slow down and go, "Wait a minute, I'm about ready to shape shift." And, and, and shut down authenticity to do it, hmm, what's going on? You know, and get curious about that territory in yourself because that's where the next thing that's going to propel your destiny is. Well, you were it's very- not in the chasing of that stuff out there that everyone else wants you to be and, and, what you, and then supersizing it too. It's really big. Jupiter is the biggest planet in our solar system and was king of the gods. So there's a symbolic importance here about in the retrograde phase of looking at where we overdo and overcompensate and over inflate. You know, I, so many people, I, I'm sure you hear this all the time when we do our readings, right? They, they feel they're born to do something quote unquote big. And right. I would say, well, what, what does that mean to you? Mm -hmm. You know, what does big mean? Because big to me can be helping down at the homeless shelter or going to the an animal rescue shelter or helping yeah. the elephants in Africa. That's big to me, mm -hmm. you know? And so the thing is, however big, big is for anyone is fate or destiny. You don't have any control over that. All you can do is be yourself and let the gods and the universe and life take it from there. And this is, there's, there's freedom in that. There's a relaxed sense of, oh, I'm enough. So, you know, most people don't feel that they're enough and they go off and they create these um, stories about what, what and, and we're fed with stories we should actually uh, engage and live to be enough. And out of that, I think you start to realize that you can go out there and be that story or try to accomplish that story, but you'll never be nourished by the results from right. whatever you do because you're, it's not coming back to you. It's coming back to the persona you've created. It's right. coming back to the shapeshifter, you've shapeshifting form of yourself. So, you know, as you know, I'm gay and I came out uh, in my work a couple of years ago and I felt this tension in myself and I've been out since I was 18, but I felt this tension in myself just as an example in my public career where I kept having to neutralize pronouns and this and that and the other thing. And then after I came out two years ago, which was really no big deal, I mean, it's just who I am, whatever. It doesn't change me as a teacher or anything like that per se. But I was able to further, I know for myself, receive compliments and receive connections with students and receive more because I was finally just all of me. Yeah. So I think a lot of this for everybody is about how can you be all of you and know it's already enough, it's always been enough. And it's you know, I just watched this movie last night, um, The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, and then the whole movie story about it is that, you know, he's on this quest to be enough to get this negative that he lost from Sean Penn's character, and he finally realizes Sean Penn had give it to him, given it to him in his, the wallet he gave him in the first place. So he goes on this whole journey, this circuitous <laughs> journey of all across Greenland and Iceland to get back and realize, I already had the negative. I, was, <laughs> I already had the special thing that I thought was going to save me. And by that time, all the striving and all of the different ambition he was engaged in didn't matter to him anymore because no. he'd had that awakening of, you know, I was already enough. It was already in my back pocket. And, and you know, when you when you are, try to negotiate that away from, from yourself, I mean, I, I kind of came out as a medium, right? I had so many issues around that. Oh, I don't want to be that. And oh, no, no, there's enough them. You know, I'm not going to step on anybody's toes. Like, you know, I'll just hide my dead people, right? And, you know, and just being, this is me. This is it. This, you know, it's this is who I am. This is all of it. Take it or leave it. There's no more artifice. There's no more to me trying to brand something or create something. It's this is it. And yeah. and maybe other people look at us and go, well, of course you're perfect as you are. But you know <laughs> what I mean? It's like, well, but it's our, it, we, everybody goes through this to yeah. some degree about not accepting that uniqueness about them, that very self that they are. Um, because they think they have to be something that pleases others or that, like you said, we're fed so many different things tribally, you know, where, where are we loyal to that persona that like, it's, it's the Oz, you know, the Oz behind the curtain, the wizard of Oz, you know, I'm okay being the little man. I don't have to have a curtain. Right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Something I addressed in the Jupiter retrograde in Leo series, which you, you know, cause you're doing it is yep. the, I call it the creative worthiness paradox. And it's this idea that 
out of feeling unworthy, we take our creativity and try to do something big or do something that's mm -hmm. going to finally make us enough and make us worthy. And in the process of doing that, we actually shut down the unique thing in us mm -hmm. that's already worthy, that's already got all it needs. And we then feel like we go invisible to ourselves and no one sees us because we're invisible to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. If you're shining, you put on the mask and you put on the show and everyone sees you, that's a glare. That's not luminosity. Yeah. That's giving off glare. And it's, and it's also a certain kind of glare that doesn't let you feel nourished by others going, wow, I feel you. I'm right. connected to you. I see you. Thank you for your gift. Your gift allows me to unlock mine. And that's what true luminosity does is it illumines the gifts in others. And that's really important to say, too, because we're called to this across the planet. So it's going to be different for each of us because each of us is unique. Yeah. But the more one person allows their unique authenticity to be expressed and creatively expressed, it gives permission to others. And it's the permission piece that we don't have in our society and certainly in many other societies, which is why there are revolutions everywhere right now and all these protests, et cetera, because this is going on for everybody. We feel this push. We're called to it right now. Uh, we know when it doesn't feel right. We know when it's false. And every single human being on this planet is being called to their authenticity. It's like this invisible thread, right? And so. It's that allowing, allowing for it instead of resisting it and then trusting too. There will be some fear because we think what will happen to us if we have to betray our old stories? Yeah. Right? Well, what if I would have never came out? I could never be me. I could never you know, find love in a way that was nourishing for me or express my eros in a way that was nourishing for me. I mean, I always tell this to everybody. Like, what if I just decided I'm just going to fake it until I make it or shift it or whatever, mm -hmm. which is impossible. You can't be but, but what you are. Yeah. You know, what if I'd done that? I mean, it's it's like we all have something we have to come out with. Yeah. It's, it's, this is an archetypal process, and this Jupiter retrograde in Leo is part of this going in and going. Well, what's the what's the shiny light in me that's meant to be like a sun for mm -hmm. other people? That's going to give them the warmth and and irradiate them with nourishment and help them grow. And also, it's about you growing that new luminous branch of self mm -hmm. and not feeling like. You're, it, you have to supersize it. Right. You know, it's about, like, as you said, it's, it's unique to each of us. But these threads that we're talking about, this is part of soul contract astrology. This stuff affects everybody, whether you believe in it or not. These right. energies are alive. They are a process. And they are part of the living energy pattern that is this solar system, this earth school's, if you will, energetics. This right. is it. This is exactly what this shows us. And mm -hmm. the timing is impeccable. And that's why I love this tool because and, and really evolved it, you know, in a way that for me feels true mm -hmm. is that it's really looking at this, not that they cause anything. It's a synchronicity as your, as your cards always speak to, you know, it's about engaging the law of synchronicity and mm -hmm. going, what is this about in terms of uh, a, a dark night of sorts of my ego, a dark night where something in my ego needs to die so something of soul can be born. Right. And in this case, it is. Yeah. In this retrograde, and then you know the the Mercury retrograde upcoming in Aquarius, it is these threads of luminosity, uniqueness, create creative self expression, you know, and and planting seeds of you know what you can become. Right. De destiny is a process. It is a verb, and it is ongoing till we're gone yeah. and transition to where we came from. So get it's on with exciting. It, yeah. I think this is going to be exciting. I know it sounds like, well, it's very heavy, but it, it really is if we're, if we're willing to allow for it. That's the other thing, not to resist it. Uh, that's, you know, what my cards kept bringing, you know, it was the sense of yeah. like, don't resist this. This is, it'll be a lot easier for you if you just go with it. Even being a little afraid is fine, but just go with it because what's, the what's gift at the it? end. Yeah, go ahead. A, no, go ahead. Yeah, the gift at the end is going to be amazing. Well, I was going to say, what's more exciting than authenticity? Yeah. Come on. What is more exciting than being you? It's freedom. You know, freedom. Free yeah. at last. You know, in a new way. And it's an ongoing process. We'll always have parts of ourselves that are going through this. But in this particular time, it is the Leo part of yourself. And then the yeah. Saturn and then the Sagittarius energy and the Aquarian energy. It is really about time to shift the story and perceptions and where you locate yourself, your GPS in your own destiny. Right. And not looking to others of lesser uh, esteem right. and vision, but there's always good, there's always good, uh, I think, uh, spaces to have people give you feedback, but right. not shame. 
Yes, you know, not shame, out. exactly. Not well, shame. Thank you so much for joining us this week. This has been so awesome. And it's, I really hope everybody got, I'm sure they got a lot out of it. I did too. And I think we've got a lot of good work ahead of us, but the kind of work that will set us all free to really be who we are. And I think when we're ourselves, when we're, we are happier, we are happier and we're making everybody else happier. So end of the day, it's all good. Thanks, Robert. Bye. Bye.